I'm Shannon Amdahl, and as a seasoned broker, I've taught over 200 agents, and I've taught multiple brokerage owners how to scale their brokerage. When I started my first brokerage over 12 years ago, I was in a brand new city, and I took 19 listings my first month, and I sold over 50 houses that first year. And in this video, I wanna to talk to you about how a brokerage owner can start to scale their business and figure out how to start pulling out of production. This is a question I get a lot as I'm talking to brokerage owners across the country, is how do I, it's almost like you're on the other side of a river and you need to build a bridge to get on the other side. You're here, but you wanna be here. And it's like, how do you get there? So this is step-by-step -step how to do it. So first of all, it starts with you and it starts with a little bit of planning. Just like anything, you can create anything you want in your brokerage. So start thinking about, if you were to start working with less clients, what clients would you continue to wanna to work with? Would you work with buyers or would you not work with them at all? If you were gonna work with buyers, would you only work with certain buyers? Would they be in a certain area at a certain price point? Maybe they're not FHA and VA buyers that might need a little bit more handholding and a little bit more time showing multiple properties and writing offers and things like that. Then would you, if you're not going to work with buyers, would you want to work with listings, which is what I would encourage you definitely to do. So if you're going to work with listings, do you work with all listings? Or again, would you only work with certain ones? So those are the things you want to sit down and think about. Now, you don't have to do all of that, you know, in one month or something. You can definitely set a phase one and a phase two. So maybe under phase one, you start giving out some of your buyers. Maybe you give them all out. Then at some point, you may go to phase two where you just basically only work with listings. And then you start scaling back even more to only work with certain listings and eventually you can get to the point where you don't work with any clients at all. Maybe you work with friends and family. You have to think through those things a little bit really just to decide what you want to do. Then set a time frame for what you think will be reasonable. Be flexible because things may go faster than you think. They may go a little slower than you think, but just be you know, working a plan and be a little flexible with the timeframes, but at least have an idea of what target you're trying to hit. Then the next thing that needs to happen is you need to think about who you will start passing your business off to. So that's likely going to be agents within your own brokerage. And so are you going to give those to newer agents and you're gonna use this as an opportunity to really mentor them, to go on appointments with them and really show them the ropes and stay on top of them every step of the way? Or is that just too much work for you? You're too busy, not what you wanna do and you wanna start just giving them to experienced agents. You need to think through that and decide which agents? Are you going to give them to all of your agents or just a small portion of them? Of course, that depends on the size of your brokerage. So that's your next thing to think through. It is an excellent recruiting opportunity. If you do plan to start bringing on maybe some newer agents and start delegating some of your business out, because that's what new agents are looking for is that opportunity to really get mentoring and have someone go on appointments with them and show them how to do everything. Then the third thing you need to think about is how you're going to pay the agents. So if you're giving them leads, sometimes leads can be varying quality. They might just be internet leads that you're generating and they have to work pretty hard to nurture those into actual clients or they might be real clients like your past clients that you're giving away. So think about whether you're going to charge maybe a 50-50 on those or some sliding scale of that depending on the circumstance. Get that all worked out. Have it clear in your own mind so that your agents won't be tripped up over some of the details and nobody will be questioning that later. You don't want to get into commission disputes with your agents and you also want to make sure you're comfortable giving up part of your business and that you can afford to do that. So make sure that you get enough of everything to, to really start to scale back. Otherwise, you know, you shouldn't really be giving up too much of your business if you're not at that level yet. And then the last thing to think about is how you're actually going to do the pass off. So as I made that transition, um, what I did is I just made sure the clients understood that I was going to be there every step of the way. This is my brokerage. So I see every piece of paper. I see everything that happens and I'm going to be right there. And then just make sure you do check-ins with the agents and with the clients somewhat consistently to make sure that it's 
going well, it's a great opportunity too for you to make sure that your agents are doing a good job and that you want to feel comfortable continuing to send them more business as it goes along. And the clients really appreciate that when you honor your word, when you say you're going to be there, that you actually are. And honestly, that's how you make that transition to go from being an agent in production, which you might be the busiest agent in your office right now. And for a lot of you, that's true to actually becoming more and more of a business owner is letting go of some of that production and learning how to do it in the right way.